My title is Audio Conservator and I look after the analog tape collection and that um, features tapes that are on ten and a half inch reels, seven inch reels, five inch reels, three inch reels and cassette tapes as well. So anything that is on an analog tape. As you see here, this is a little, it's old, it's very old because I made it about 20 years ago. Um, but on here there's all kinds of different tape and that was, I wanted to make something up so that I could easily reference it and then I would know what kind of tape it was. And so, so what have we got here? Um... This tape here is a brand called Emi Tape 4 and this particular tape is acetate tape as opposed to polyester and so one of the things that this tape will suffer from is loss of lubricant otherwise known as LOL in the field. So another tape that we have here is a, this is an ACFA PEM469, one of my pet hate tapes. Um, this tape will suffer from a syndrome known as SSS, which is sticky tape syndrome. So as you can see here, that part of the magnetic layer has adhered itself to the black backing and on this side so part of that this the brown side here is the magnetic layer which is where the audio is recorded onto and so part of that has has been lifted off and gone onto the backing of the tape which will reduce the signal that we have in the end. But some of them I, I also just collected because I kind of liked the colours of them. Some of them, like uh, in the old days, the they used to use in broadcasting things like green and red for leader tape. And because not all tape is just one way, they used to flip the tape on an open reel tape. And so one would... One end would say that this is side one, and red could be side two of the tape. Some of the other problems that um, that you'll find on tape, as I'm sure happens on film, is this here, this join, is known as a splice. And... Depending on the era and the type of splicing tape that's been put on it, that, that splice can create quite a lot of problems. Now in the world of radio, a lot of our tapes will, will, have, will have tapes that have many, many splices. And part of the process before you preserve something is to actually triage the tape and remove all the old splices and also remove the old bits of glue which have a tendency, this one is alright at the moment but some they have a tendency where they for several layers they'll have oozed out this gunk and it will, the tape will physically be doing shaking and you know as it's going over the transports and so we need to get rid of that before we make our final preservation copy. Uh, I've done one tape that took me probably about a good day to remove, there was nearly a hundred splices in it, which was pretty intense. We do get tapes that suffer from mould. They might have been stored, you know, a lot of People might just have their tapes stored in their hot water cupboard or in their garage or under their bed or 
So depending on uh, the conditions that they're stored in, the tape can then um, suffer from mould, and then that's a different, whole different ball game. Tapes with sticky shed syndrome, which is the loss of um, it's the hydrolysis process that's ha happened there. When it's going over the playback head of the machine, it will let out a high-pitched squeal, which um, will come out in the digital format as distortion. So in that case, then that has to be taken off the machine and put into the oven. So we have a, a special uh, convection oven for baking of tapes. And it used to be a number of years ago, it was recommended that tapes be baked for about 12 hours at approximately 50, 50 to 52 degrees. And now um, I am finding I need to leave them in a lot longer. So it will be nothing for me to leave the tapes in for maybe up to two weeks. So if we get like an urgent um, preservation on demand for a client who wants to have it on the radio tomorrow and it presents with SSS, then they can't have it because it has to be in the oven for at least a couple of weeks. So once, once that's happened, um, there are other things I might, uh, if it's a very bad tape, I might have to apply isopropyl alcohol to it so that I can get it to smoothly run across the playback head to get a signal, a clean signal. And once I'm confident that that's going to happen, then I'll put it through, we use uh, WaveLab, our digital editor, and I'll put it through that. And then I'm listening all the time for any other naughty sounds. Well, this here, not only is it a cool box, um, is a, it's a sound mirror magnetic recording tape. And this would date from the early 50s. And this tape is actually made of paper. So... It is surprisingly robust. That side there is the backing, and that is your magnetic layer on this side. So the actual brand, the Sound Mirror, um, they also had their own Sound Mirror tape machine. We do have one here, and it's in storage. So this, you don't want to get it wet. <laughs> Not a good idea with paper. So that that is pretty amazing.